Hi, this is Margo. This is Friday evening, June the 28th, 2019, 6.32 p.m. Pacific Time, United States of America. We're going to briefly look at sulfur dioxide again today. And then we've got volcanoes to talk about and earthquakes to talk about. So this is sulfur dioxide from today, the 28th, from the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Services website. I have the Pacific view pulled up and total column. Now this is, this is how the sulfur dioxide is spreading out from the Rikoki volcano explosions that happened on June 21st and 22nd so about a week ago that began and then this is what's happening from the uh, Ulawan volcano that erupted when was it a couple of days ago yeah two days ago down at Papua New Guinea and so that's that's kind of dissipating down there um, but we have a new explosion down at Papua New Guinea at the Manam volcano it, it happened today so we're going to have a new sulfur dioxide blast to add to this we'll be seeing that tomorrow on cams I'm sure so Um, this is just unbelievable. This just blows my mind. If we look at the global view, globally, look at all the sulfur dioxide worldwide. It, it just looks like the Earth is bleeding. It just looks how it's spreading across the Arctic. Here it is down here in so South Pacific and then we we are seeing other releases where other volcanoes are are act active. Here's from the Popocatapetl volcano in Mexico. Here's Hawaii doing stuff stuff down in South America, and so on. And so it's I don't know what's going on. I think we're seeing definitely the an uptick in volcanic activity I've never seen this much sulfur dioxide and I, I've i only been reporting on this stuff for a little over a year but this is insane and here's the North Pole view of this this mass sulfur dioxide mass from the Rikoki volcano and here's so here's Greenland here's Canada here's a here's Alaska here's the Aleutian Islands here's uh, here's Kamchatka Russia here's Russia over here and we can see it's already spreading all across the North Pole and the Arctic and it's raining up there and so the rain is bringing this ash and the sulfur dioxide down onto the sea ice and it will be melting quickly very quickly so there's that I'm going to leave that as a backdrop and it's you know it's spreading across the world I mean bringing much higher levels across the United States and Canada and then look at look at what it's doing up in northern Canada Alaska got covered and now it's getting another wave and look at Russia like half of Russia is is just covered in the red it's anyway insane so now let's talk about the Manam volcano <coughs> this is here wait where'd it, where'd it go here it is 
Oh, okay. This is this is the general worldwide volcano news and updates from Volcano Discovery. This is from today. And here are the um, volcanoes they're reporting on today. Ducono, Reventator, Sangay, uh, Sabancaya, Ebico, and Manam. And so, but the big one that we're going to look at is the Manam. And it's, if you want to know where that's located, Here's Google Earth, here's Australia, and this is Papua New Guinea, this island just to the north of Australia. And then Manam is a little island right here off the coast of Papua New Guinea. And people live there. It's home to about 9,000 residents, I think. <coughs> and the Uluwan volcano is located over here. So strong erupted phase sends ash to 50,000 feet or 15 kilometers at altitude. So this is a, a huge blast. It will it's given off tons of sulfur dioxide. So here's the article from Volcano Discovery. Just two days after the large eruption of Uluwan, another large explosive eruption occurred in Papua New Guinea today this time from Manam Volcano located on a small island north of the mainland. <clears throat> Earlier today, the more or less permanently active volcano had another of its not unusual, short-lived, but very intense par paroxysm paroxysmal episode with lava fountaining occur occurred today. <clears throat> starting around 1300 local time, an ash plume that rose to 50,000 feet altitude. A few hours later, the ash plume became separated from the volcano and was observed dri drifting southwest. Vac Darwin issued a warning and mentioned that it was expecting the plume to dissipate within 12 hours above an area over the southern part of or south of Papua New Guinea. See attached graphics around the time of this report. Such par paroxysm, I don't know how to say that, have occurred at the volcano relatively frequently at intervals of few months during the past few years, past years last on May 14th and January 24th, 2019. In most cases, lava flows as well as pyroclastic flows have occurred. No reports about significant damage have been received. Local reports indicate heavy ash fall blocking out the sunlight. And, um, I mean, others are blasting, too. The Sabancaya volcano, um, intermittent emissions to 21,000 feet. Ducono, 7,000 feet. Here's, <coughs> here's another one, Sabancaya. Um, emissions to 27,000 feet. Reventator, 14,000 feet. I mean, this is, this is incredible. And uh, if we want to see that picture, here's the page that tells about it. So here's the picture. 
This is taken from a passing airplane. So we'll leave this link in the show notes. We also, I um, I looked on Twitter, <coughs> and here's what's going on on Twitter with the Nam volcano. Another eruption today in Papua New Guinea. This time it's Nam volcano. Um, the plume is partially hidden in the clouds, but more clear in the sulfur dioxide channel right on the right here of Himawari 8. So here's, it was cloudy, so you can't really see the explosion, but this is the sulfur dioxide that's pluming up. So we will definitely see, well, I would think we would definitely see a blast on cams by tomorrow. <clears throat> so I'll do a follow-up and show that. Here's an article about it. This is from abc.net.au and this is from uh, updated yesterday. Well, they're a day ahead because <clears throat> this is Australia at 9.19 p.m. Second Papua New Guinea volcano eruption in days stretches scarce humanitarian resources. A second volcano has erupted in Papua New Guinea just days after the eruption of Mount Uluwun sent thousands fleeing sparking fears that scarce humanitarian resources will be stretched even thinner. About 15,000 people are expected to be affected by the first eruption, which began on Wednesday. Prime Minister James Marapi said defense forces would be deployed to assist in the relief work. A second volcano on the island of Manam in the Madang province began to erupt with a thundering noise at around 1 a.m. Friday local time. Manam Islander Bill Salba told the ABC, By 5 a.m. thick smoke and ash was filling the sky. The situation is still continuing. The ash is still falling, Mr. Salba, Salba said. There's ashfall covering about six villages because of the wind direction. Manam Island, just 10 kilometers wide, is one of the Pacific nation's most active volcanoes and is home to roughly 9,000 people. Eruptions happen frequently, but Mr. Salba said emergency response teams usually take a long time to respond. The usual process is in one week, is one week. You know, after we're all dead, then maybe they come and take reports. Well, that's being honest. So here's the Uluwan volcano. And I've already reported on that, so. I'm not gonna repeat that. I'll leave the link below on that. And there's more on Twitter if you want to do your own search. And here's showing sulfur dioxide from the volcanoes, how it's spreading and what direction it's going. Here's another one about it. <clears throat> Here's Volcano Discovery. <clears throat> so.
this one. <coughs> Lightning strokes detected within 75 kilometers of Manam volcano between 2129 uh, UTC on June 27th and 1500 UTC on June 28th. About 60 events have occurred in the last two hours that look like they are part of a new eruption. So it's lightning, lightning that they're seeing too. And here's all the areas that they're seeing. That's explosive. That would be so scary. So there's that. And, okay, so we're done with that. Also, um, here's one of the large volcanoes that happened today. This was a 6.4 magnitude that happened in the Mariana Islands over here, just north of Papua New Guinea. Of course, I'll include this in the volcano, in the earthquake report. This had, um, different different places report different. Now they say 6.2 down here. I think USGS has it as a 6.4. It came in at 15.51 UTC on Friday. The It was equivalent to 3.8 atomic bombs and it was very deep. It was 441 kilometers deep and that that's equivalent to let me see 441 kilometers I have a converter chart here hang on Well, 400, wait, 400 and, never mind. I thought I would find it. It was over 200 miles deep. It was this f earthquake right here. 410 kilometers, they're reporting on USGS. This came in at 851 Pacific time. That's my time zone. 6.4 magnitude at Farallon de Pajaros, Northern Mariana Islands. Right here. It was in the water, so it didn't do any damage. But if you, here's the tsunami warner thing. And the depth was 286 miles. There it was. It was originally reported as a 6.5 and there's no tsunami threat. I read all those reports. There was no tsunami threat. And here's the depth. 286 miles. And there it is in miles. There we go. So now we know on that. And then here's Papua New Guinea, so that's not very far from and where this volcano is blowing up. And with the really deep ones, that's a very deep earthquake, 410 kilometers. That will cause the tectonic plates to move across the planet, and that was a huge, huge earthquake. So that's, that's the one we're talking about today. Let's let's see if what the I felt it reports look like. Um, oh, this is not very much. Someone in Saipan says I was asleep and it woke me by the time I was fully awake. It almost seemed like a dream. At Davao City in the Philippines, very weak shaking, 
Vancouver, British, British Columbia, Canada, they felt light shaking. Russia, St. Petersburg, they didn't feel it. So those are the reports there. So, 3.8 atomic bombs. Let's leave this one in our show notes. Okay, now before we get into our earthquakes, let's look at what's going on at Oroville. I'm following that very closely. Here's the lake level. At 6 o'clock, it was 895.92. Wow, look how the inflow dropped. At 7 o'clock, the inflow was 6206. And then in an hour, it dropped to 1798. That looks strange to me. And they've increased the outflow, I guess, at the Hyatt Power Plant because they're not using the spillway. Um, they increased the outflow at 4 o'clock to a little over 7,000 CFS and at 6 o'clock they increased it to 74.75 but it held at 895.97 all day yesterday from midnight to midnight and then at 9 o'clock this morning it popped up to 895.99 held there at that level until 6 o'clock this evening and it dropped down to 895.92 so I just find it curious that all of a sudden the inflow drops from 6206 to 1798 in an hour that's after it's been between 40, about 4,500 to 6,300. That's just weird to me. I don't understand. I do not understand that. But I'm just, I'm just showing it. All right, now let's get to our earthquakes. So we've got USGS pulled up here. We're showing 300 earthquakes of all magnitudes in the last 24 hours. Of those, we have 29 that are 2.5 magnitude or higher. And they're still coming in. We just had one down here. It looks like in Peru. Is it, or, yeah, off the coast of Peru. And another one up here off the coast of Kamchatka. So they're still they're still rolling in. It's not it's not slowing down. So let's see what's about to come off the map. This four point one <coughs> off the coast of Guatemala is the first one. Um Let's go there, right here. <coughs> this came in 4.1 near Champerico, Guatemala. Came in at 7.07 .07 last night. It was 35 kilometers deep. Let's see what the next one is, because I don't want to miss any. I kind of did the show a little earlier last night, so there might there might be some that are about to come off. <coughs> Here's a 3.7 at Atka, Alaska at 7:18 last night, 148 kilometers deep. 
See, it's up here in the Aleutian Islands, right there, Atka. That's getting up there. And these times I'm telling you are Pacific time, because that's my time zone. But we can definitely see an uptick in these larger earthquakes. See, all the way around this right side on the Ring of Fire and on the left side, definitely an uptick. Alright, so those were the immediate ones we needed to look at. So let's go down here. Here's one off the coast, of, or no, it's, it's on land at Panama, next to the Costa Rica border. It's a 4.4 at Finca Blanco Numero Uno. At Panama at 4.17 this morning. Next, coming on down, we've got one off the coast of Colombia, 4.7 near Mascaro, Mascara, Colombia at 11.48 last night. Coming on down, this one's new, off the coast of Peru of 4.6 near Paracas at 6.06 this evening. Here's one on land in Argentina of 4.2 near Abra Pampa at 10.29 last night. This one's deep, 257 kilometers deep. And then a larger one, uh, 5.0 on land near La Serena at 1.30 this morning, 81 kilometers deep. Here's La Serena, 66 kilometers away. So unless there were people living around there, it probably didn't do any damage. Coming across the Pacific Ocean, We've got <clears throat> a 5.1 at Lata, Solomon Islands, or near there, 209 kilometers south. So, I mean, that's the reporting station. At 11.14 this morning, then here's Papua New Guinea with all of the volcanoes going off. Here... <clears throat> This one's in in the water. A 4.9 near Luwuk, Indonesia, at 11:07 this morning. Then coming up here at the Philippines, we have one on land and one in the ocean. There's a 4.7 on land near Bunawan at 12:04 this morning and a 4.4 .4 in the ocean near Hinatuan at 3.29 this afternoon. This one was 91 kilometers deep, a little bit deeper. That 4.7, that could have caused damage. That's close to a 5 if that was near, near people that could have caused damage. You would feel that <coughs> And then here's the 6.4 in the Mariana Islands, Northern Mariana Islands, that we reported on earlier. And it's at, it came in at 6.51 Pacific Time this morning. I mean 8.51, what am I thinking? Pacific Time this morning. It was 410 kilometers deep. And just up north on that red line was a 4.7 near Izu Islands, Japan region at 9.30 last night. Then coming on up, we've been seeing a lot of activity here this week. Just off the coast of Kamchatka, 
right here in this this V see this V where these tectonic plates come together it's it's a it's a fulcrum point and a lot of activity happens here <clears throat> and it's at the end of the Aleutian Island chain so the first one was a 4.1 at 4.30 this morning and then a 4.3 at 8.11 this morning and a 4.8 just came in at 6.04 this afternoon then <clears throat> here in Afghanistan was a 4.2 near Farkar at 10.16 last night deep 211 kilometers deep that's quite deep for something on land okay those are the international earthquakes <clears throat> now we're up to 302 302 earthquakes so let's start here in Hawaii Hawaii for all magnitudes <clears throat> seeing a cluster here at Kilauea and a cluster down here at Pahala here's a 2.2 at Lalani Estates 2.3 on the flank of Kilauea let's just go right here look at that oh my gosh we've got seven right in the crater this is in the crater seriously this is this is definitely an uptick and you see all these that say a minus 0.1 kilometer depth minus 0.4 kilometer depth that means that the epicenter of the earthquake is up in in the mountain or in the volcano that's showing movement that's showing the magma moving the so 2.6 at 1239 this morning 2.4 at 12.40 this morning a 1.8 at 12.48 this morning this is just minutes apart and a 2.3 at 12.55 this morning 1.7 at 2.57 a.m. a 1.7 at 2.26 p.m. and a 1.7 at 4.13 p.m. So that was the last one. And this one on the flank came in, this is a 2.3, That this came in at 1.47 this afternoon. So now let's look <coughs> at Pahala <clears throat> we've got six here today a uh, 2.2 uh, 1.9 1.9 1.9 2.3 2.3 so these are these are definitely, this is significant, that's a lot of earthquakes, it's 14 total. The stuff is happening over there. Now let's look at the Caribbean. This is pretty quiet. We're only showing four here today, I'll call them off. 2.7, 3.0, 1 1.8, and a 3.3 .3. so that's pretty that's a down tick there now let's go to Alaska for all magnitudes we're seeing 102 here today so that's a little uptick 
average is between 50 and 100 for Alaska. So here was the 3.7 at Atka, and here's a 2.9 at Redoubt Volcano, here's a 2.9 at Nome, and Kobuk had a 3.2 and a 2.8. Now those are all the larger ones. So six were two and a half magnitude or higher. Now let's go to all magnitudes and we've got a little one off the coast of Unalaska, a 0.2 at Dutch Harbor. And then we're coming on up Here's this Cook Inlet. Look at these. At Old Iliamna. These are some micro some small ones. 1.5 there. Here's the 2.9 at Redoubt Volcano. That just came in at 657, 103 kilometers deep. 2.9, that's gotten up there. That could be a three right at right at the volcano that that's the volcano oh that's Iliamna volcano well where's Redoubt I think they're close the reporting station is Redoubt volcano why is that here's 2.4 Redoubt they're just they're close together so they they use the same reporting station I guess here's a 2.0 1.7 all at readout then we've got some in Cook Inlet here's Anchorage and the movement is kind of spreading out here and they're just peppering it's fanning out more than usual see see how it's just moving out moving out and here's some in the armpit I call it an armpit we've got five here at Haines Junction today 2.5 is the highest and then they're coming on up there's a 2.0 at Talkeetna 2.1 North Ninana there's one at Kovu, Ko, 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 no, Arctic Village, sorry. Here at Kovuk, we have an uptick of 33 here today. And we had those larger ones, some larger ones here too. So that's definitely showing movement. Now let's come down into the lower 48, including Baja, Mexico. We've got 166 here today. So let's start over here. Uh, 1.8 near New Madrid, Missouri at 2.11 this morning. That's in the New Madrid hazard zone, the danger zone. Here in Oklahoma, we've got 12 today. 2.3 Holdenville. 2.5 Stroud. 1.7, these are all at Hennessy. 1.6 2.0. Those are all at Hennessy. Here's a 1.9 at Kingfisher. 1.8 Hennessy, but they're all in the same cluster. 1.7, 2.3, 2.2, .2, all at Hennessy. 1.6 Stroud, and a 1.6 at Edmond. So how so we had eight right here at the Hennessy area. Now 
Now in Texas, here's one in West Texas, a 2.7 year mintone that happened at 9.20 last night. So that's getting up there. Arizona is clear, Utah is clear. And we've, we're, we've only got three in the Yellowstone area today. We've got a 1.7 and a 2.3 both at Chalice, Idaho and a 0.8 near Old Faithful Geyser. And then coming on across in the Pacific Northwest We've got 14 here today, so that's an uptick. <clears throat> but see all these little diamonds? These are explosions. So let's look at our trimmer map from yesterday. They had 18 on the trimmers, and they had a few on Vancouver Island, and then a few down here in Oregon between Eugene and Roseville. Is where where they show Roseburg, not Roseville, between Eugene and Roseburg. So that's where our trimmers showed up, and the trimmers are movement movement of the plates. They're measuring the harmonic trimmers, and that's what happens before an earthquake happens. And a lot of times, an earthquake won't result from tremors, but a lot of times the tremors show us where movement is happening so that we can be looking for things like the slippage of this Cascadia subduction zone. It, it's indicators. We're going to start up here in Canada with this 2.2 magnitude explosion near Princeton at 10.08 this morning. Now that's huge. That was a huge explosion to cause a 2.2 earthquake. Here's a 1.8 explosion near Milton Freewater, Oregon, and a 1.6 explosion near Glide, Oregon. Now for the earthquakes, here's a 1.6 at Packwood. And look at these clusters here. Um, Okay, we've got two at Packwood, and that's at Mount Rainier. Uh, 1.2 and a 1.6. It looks like it's up in the crater. Both of those are in the crater of Mount Rainier. And then down here, these are in the Mount St. Helens area. We've got one, two, three, four, five. They're calling those at Morton. And then the rest of them are at Mount St. Helens Volcano. There are nine here. So five are up here at Morton. And then the rest of them, where it says Amboy, that's Mount St. Helens. And we're seeing some in the crater. So we've got four at Mount St. Helens. A point four, one point three. Here's a zero. That's, they're saying Morton, so that's on the flanks. And a point one. And then the others are right here. Five more. Uh, point nine, one point three, point four, point four, and one point one. So definitely movement up there. Lots of movement. Now let's come on down. Oh, I showed that. The explosion at Glide, Oregon. Now coming on down to California. In Northern California, here's a 1.5 near Lake Pillsbury, straight across. The straight line across is one 
uh, to the south of Pyramid Lake of point two. That came in at 1.21 this afternoon. And this one was at 12.35 this morning. So here in the Reno area, we've got that one near Pyramid Lake. And then um, point 0.8 near Truckee. And then we've got point 0.5 at Hawthorne, point 0.9 at Gabs. Do we have anything else in North Nevada? No. And Southern Nevada. Oh, here's an explosion. A 2.1 explosion near Enterprise at 1231 this, mor this afternoon. And then we've got five earthquakes down here near Pahrump and Beatty. These are small, zeros and under, so these are microquakes. Now coming back up to California, let's just, now this is kind of a lot to include in one. Here, let's, let's do this. Here's one at Mono Lake, right in the middle of the lake, a point six. And here we've got seven at Mammoth Lakes. Two point eight, that's getting up there. That happened at two twenty four this morning at Tom's place, but that's part of Mammoth Lakes. And a one point six. Those were the highest ones. Uh-oh, look at this 1.6. It's at a minus 0.5 kilometer depth. So it's up in the mountain. The earthquake is up in the mountain. The magma is flowing. Here's a 0.6 earthquake with a minus 0.2 kilometer depth. And minus, and the 1.6 earthquake was at a minus 0.5 kilometer depth. So we've got 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 a couple there at negative depths. Now we're just coming on down. Here's a 1.3 at Deep Springs. 0.7 at Big Pine, 0.6 at Big Pine, 0.4 at Big Pine. Now two of these were at zero depth, so right at the surface. Here in the Coso area, <coughs> we've got eight here today. Uh, 1.2 and 1.2 are the highest ones, or the largest ones, and the rest are under that. Then we've got um, a 2.0 at Fort Irwin. One point five at Alante, two point two near Yano. Did we get this one? A one point three at Mojave. Okay, I think we got this one. Kernville, one point two at Kernville. We've got two in Baja at Delta. Remember we had some here yesterday too. Uh, 2.1 at, they were both, they were seconds apart. This was at 10.24.08 last night, 2.1. 
and then a 1.6 at 102446. So less than a minute apart, a 2.1 and a 1.6, the same location. Here's, here are the ones I want to count in the Southern California region today. There's 50 here, so that's kind of a high high average number. Here's a 1.4 off the coast of La Jolla. Here's a 1.9 at Lakeside. I'm just trying to get some of the larger ones. A 2.2 at Brawley. Let's look over here to see what's two and a half magnitude or higher. That was the one at Tom's place. We already saw that. <coughs> okay, they're just peppered around. Clusters here. Clusters there. Singles. But this red line is the San Andreas fault line that runs right up through. Now, we had a little more activity at Glen Avon today. Five, not many. We had more, a bunch yesterday, I think. So, that's that's kind of calming down. Oh, here we go. Uh, now there's a 1.2 Loma Linda. Thought I saw something here earlier. Maybe not. Okay, here's some explosions. Or quarry blast. A 1.8 at Home Gardens and a 1.1 at home gardens. So they're blasting and doing whatever. Here's a little cluster at Fontana. And so on. So you get the idea for Southern California. Let's come on up, <clears throat> following this red San Andreas fault line up. Here's a 1.7 San Simone, 0.2 Parkfield, 1.2 Pinnacles, and a 0.7 Soledad, 1.0 San Martin, 1.1 Alum Rock, 1.3 Magnitude Quarry Blast, 1.9 Crockett, 1.3 Magnitude Quarry Blast that came in at 140 this afternoon. Then the 1.9 at Crockett Earthquake came in at 740 tonight. We got this one at Pillsbury. Now, let's see what's going on up here at the geysers. We've got 42. So that's an uptick. That's more than usual. More than I like to see here. So, most of these are under 1. Looks like. Yeah, low, low ones. 2.0 is the biggest one. So let's zoom out and see if there's anything else to look at. Two 
2.9 Redoubt Volcano. We saw that. Peru, all those. We got everything. So that's it for our volcano and earthquake report for tonight. So I hope everyone has a safe weekend. Peaceful and safe. And so that we can continue reporting on all of this stuff. And I do believe we are in the end times. And we all need to get our spiritual houses in order sooner than later. So until next time, God bless you. Go in peace and I'll talk to you soon. Good night.